Hello, I'm John Brisson, author of Fix Your Gut, health coach. Welcome to the Fix Your Gut YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about what I believe to be an extremely important topic, which is natural light. Now, as you can see on this fine autumn day in North Carolina, uh, we have plenty of sunlight uh, today. I was actually outside uh, getting some sun earlier, which might be why my face is a little bit red. Um, but yeah, I, you know, we, in our modern lives, we don't get enough sunlight. You know, many people are working in an office in a cubicle away from the window you know whatever sunlight they may get is um, or, or exposure is either through a, a window or walking to the building on their way to work and maybe leaving depending on the time of the year um, you know many people aren't getting outside they're not getting sun and it's having a very detrimental effect to our health uh, without being exposed to natural light so our Sun emits electromagnetic radiation across the whole electromagnetic, well, most of the electromagnetic spectrum. So most of the time, when you think of light, you know, most people think of the visible light range, um, which spans between 380 to 780 uh, nanometers. So the visible light range is what you learned about in science class, you know, Roy G. Biv, the colors of the rainbows, you know, the colors that the eye can see. Um, and it is also the strongest output range of the sun for this total radiant spectrum that goes through our atmosphere. Um, and there are other parts of electromagnetic radiation as well. There's UVA, UVB, UVC, which makes up the ultraviolet spectrum. Um, now, UVA, um, I think it spans between 315 and 400 nanometers. Um, and uh, it, it's what you normally get if you go sit in a tanning bed. There are some tanning beds that have a little bit more UVB radi uh, radiation uh, exposure, um, but most tanning beds are UVA. So UVA, there's a couple of things associated with it. Um, unlike UVB, it penetrates the epidermis, which is the top layer of skin, and goes down to the dermis, um, as well as it, it is able to cause sunburn um, as well um, in people if they get too much of it. That's the thing. We're talking about natural light. We're talking about sunlight exposure. You know, you want to do it within limits. You don't want to burn because when you start burning, it starts causing you know, a lot of oxidative stress and damage to, to, to the skin. So UVA does a couple of things. One, it increases the formation of nitri nitrous oxide when you're exposed to it. And the nitric oxide um, this is important. It's a vasodilator. Uh, people with the NOS3 gene mutation, especially if you're homozygous, uh, you may produce less nitric, uh, nitric oxide. Um, and in doing so, um, you may have a little bit of um, poor blood flow, especially to the extremities. And getting sunlight can remedy that. Um, you know, nitrous oxide also um, it, it helps. Um, nitrous oxide also, other than being a vasodilator, also helps with immune regulation, um, proper uh, cell apoptosis, which is cellular death, um, but only you know within moderation. If you get too much, it can cause immune suppression. Um, it can cause viral reactivation. You know if you're dealing with uh, herpes virtae, like H, you know herpes uh, simplex one or two, or or cytomegalovirus or varicella. You know for some people can cause shingles. Um, if too much nitrous oxide is produced from exposure to UVA. Um, and it can also, if too much, again, can form a free radical known as pyronitrate nitrate in, the, in the mitochondria, um, which, is, which is very bad. <laughs> you know, the mitochondria, usually the two main uh, free radicals it has to deal with is superoxide, which can easily be broken down by superoxidized dimutase um, in, in, into, um, in, in, into hydrogen peroxide and then eventually water and oxygen. Um, but pyronitrate, Pyroxynitrate is a little bit harder to break down. It's a very potent, very uh, active uh, free radical. Um, and also, um, UVA uh, helps to produce uh, beta endorphins uh, by the body, which is why sunlight exposure has been correlated with pain relief and an improve in mood, because endorphins do make you feel happy. Uh, similar to, you know, when people exercise, you know, a lot of people exercise to get that high, that we call runner's high. Uh, the same thing can happen through sunlight exposure. Um, so yeah, I mean, UVA is important to get in moderation. Um, UVB, uh, which, you know, most people, 
I know that I've talked a lot about. Um, UVB is, 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 it penetrates the dermis, is what you see on the TV for the UV index. It's what it's based off is the amount of UVB, UVB exposure that you will get. Um, and it can cause sunburn, uh, just like UVA. Um, and, but it is important for the production of vitamin D. Um, UVB is what you produce, causes the production of vitamin D. And I'll do a separate video on vitamin D on another day. But when your skin is exposed to UVB, 70 hydrocholesterol in your skin turns into pre-vitamin D, which eventually turns into vitamin D, which binds to vitamin D proteins in the bloodstream, carries it to your liver. The liver stores the vitamin D as 25 hydroxy vitamin D, uh, or 25 hydroxy D, vitamin D, and then eventually the kidney and the cells themselves can activate that stored vitamin D into 125 hydroxy vitamin D, which is an active vitamin D, which is what the body actually uses. So yes, UVB is how we produce our vitamin D. Now, UVB increases in intensity the closer you are to the equator and the time of the year. So for example, I live in North Carolina and I can get UVB from the sun from about beginning of March to about the end of November. After that, most of the sunlight that I get when I go outside is primarily UVA and IR. Um, now, if I lived in Florida, I could pretty much make vitamin D all year because I can be exposed to UV radiation all year. If I lived up in Maine, that window would be a lot shorter um, between, um, I guess, probably between I'd be able to make vitamin D uh, most of the time in the summer and a little bit um, in the um, late spring and early autumn when you'd be able to make vitamin D. And there's an app on your phone called D-Minder uh, that you can get D-M-I-N-D-E-R and you can plug in your location and uh, it will it will tell you when you can make vitamin D and you can start me measuring the amount of vitamin D by the time you're spinning outside by factoring in clothing um, and how much vitamin D you're making and how much vitamin D your vitamin D level should be. It's a very, very good app and I recommend it. But yes, UVB is what we, um, radiation is what we use uh, to produce vitamin D um, in the skin. So I did want to, to, to talk about that too. Um, so um, UVC, uh, a lot of UVC doesn't make it to the earth, down to the earth. It, it, is, it is absorbed by our atmosphere. Uh, UVC um, has a range of 100 to 280 nanometers and I forgot to mention UVB is from 280 to the beginning of UVA which is 315 nanometers. So UVC um, is a very has a high frequency of violet light, so it it has a very antimicrobial germicidal effect. It's mainly used what you find in germicidal lamps. Um, you, most of the time, it is a bulb that emits a large amount of UVC. Um, so you, you know there've been you can see some articles in the newspaper or magazines sometimes where they'll be like, well, letting sunlight in your house works as a um, and it has germicidal properties where it's an antiseptic. Your grandmother was right because a lot of people, is, I guess that's old colloquialism. Your grandma would be like, you know, open up your curtains, let the sunlight in, you know, you'll get sick left often. And there is some truth to that. Um, so, you know, that's why a lot of the ultraviolet range, it has the ability to, you know, especially UVC, but even UVB and UVA, it does work well against anti, it has an antimicrobial effect. So that's why a lot of people with skin infections, if they expose their skin to the sun, um, in moderation, you wouldn't want it to burn, um, it, it would reduce it. I mean, they were using it for microbacterium uh, tuberculosis infections of the skin uh, back in the 50s. I mean, there, and even before then, there were lamps that were specifically made to work for that. And a lot of people with the condition psoriasis also see benefit with the sun too. Um, so yeah, I mean, the sun within moderation is important. Um, and that's why I wanted to talk about um, the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and how it affects uh, your health. Uh, the last part I want to mention is infrared, uh, which is from 700 nanometers all the way to 1 million nanometers. Um, and uh, infrared light seems to work a lot with stimulating our mitochondria and making our mitochondria work more efficiently. Uh, and in doing so seems to help improve many health conditions, you know, from heart disease, um, cardiovascular issues, cerebrovascular issues, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, so infrared seems to help also with cellular repair. 
um, and cellular tissue repair. Um, so if you had an injury, you know, it, you might use an infrared light uh, generator on on the tissue that was injured. Um, and infrared light, you mainly get exposed to that at dawn and at dusk. Um, and it is important throughout today to get exposed to different, you know, times of light. Next, we're going to talk about why she get exposed to light in the morning instead of what I was talking about pretty much midday a minute ago, which is for vitamin D production. Um, so, first of all, the reason why you should expose to light when you first wake up in the morning is multiple reasons. Um, there's a, a, before light even hits our retinas or our skin, there is a condition through circadian rhythm called um, the cortisol awakening response. So about 30 minutes to an hour before we get up, our body starts upregulating cortisol so that our blood pressure starts to increase because it was low while we slept, while we were resting. Our heart rate starts to increase so that when we get out of bed, we don't completely fall down. And we also need the increased you know, cardiovascular support to take on the day that we're about to get ready to get up to do. Um, so after that, you know, the circadian rhythm, it, it is affected by external factors, but it also, there also is an internal clock too that's regulated by our body um, that is separate from those external factors or the external factors can work together with it. Um, so yes, even before we even get sun in the morning, sunlight in the morning, our body knows it's generally time to get up per our circadian rhythm. So um, when sunlight starts to come through your window, um, a couple of things happen. One, your skin is able to sense light. Your retinas don't aren't the only thing that, you know, you open your eyes and you see light. Your skin is also able to sense that. We have multiple studies now um, that, 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 that um, OPN3 um, is the key sensor for your melanocytes within your skin to be able to, sen to, be able to, to, to notice blue light. So the skin, the light hits your skin first and then your body kind of adjusts a little bit of its circadian rhythm to that. And then so you wake up, your eyes open up, um, and then blue light and, you know, the visible light spectrum and all, you know, it, it, it ultraviolet, it all enters your, your, through, your through your retina. Um, and when that happens, um, it starts to, um, the photosynthesizers within your eyes, um, it starts to activate this uh, photopigment called melanopsin. And melanopsin is contained in the photosensitive retinal ganglion cells of your eye within your retina. And so when light hits those cells and melanopsin is activated, um, the body pretty much realizes that it is morning and it is time, you know, it is fully light outside and it is time to get up. Even though the cortisol waking response happened before uh, the light was even hitting your body and then the light first hit you know your, your skin and you know that started uh, the awakening process but melanopsin is, is where it really starts to get triggered um, and so when you know when you're when it's activated and it goes um, sets the body helps to not really set but reg, helps to regulate uh, to a degree because remember like I said you have an internal clock uh, but it helps to recommend the um, super uh, chiasmatic nucleus, um, which is a central body clock in the brain, and it kind of helps to sync it, um, but it isn't completely necessary. And so your body starts to do a couple of things. One, the light starts to increase the, the production of serotonin within the brain, and in doing so, that starts to help you wake up. Um, that starts to help you know control your proper mood throughout the day, gets you ready for the day. That's what one of the most important things that serotonin does is it's a mood regulator um, and it, it is what later is you know depending on how much serotonin you produce and your methylation pathways are good it is later eventually um, methylated into melatonin at night so that when you go to bed uh, you'll be able to sleep and get all the benefits of melatonin uh, in addition to be exposed to natural light also starts to increase norepinephrine uh, and norepinephrine is, is associated with is, is the awakening uh, neurotransmitter. Um, it is associated with being awake. It increases, you know, very sharply in the morning and throughout the day, and decreases toward night till we go to bed. And once we're exposed to complete darkness, it levels off. So norepinephrine helps, you know, get us ready, ready for the day, just like serotonin does. It helps keep us awake, alert, uh, ready to take on everything that we need to do. And this happens, it starts when light hits your skin, 
you start to wake up a little bit more, you start to open up your eyes, then light hits your retinas and then melanopsin and it starts triggering all those other things. So because of that, you start to be ready to face the day. And also cortisol makes its final increase once you know light hits your retina. So you want to get exposed to that light in the morning and a lot of us aren't because we have curtains up. So what you should do is if you have an alarm clock or, or you know or if you live in the city where you can't sleep with your curtains open to a certain degree to let the light in, when you first wake up in the morning you should open up those curtains and let the light hit your face for a few minutes. Um, that will definitely help out. Um, you don't have to open up the window and put your head out. Um, because UVB is usually not in, it's not in at that time. So glass usually allows UVA in and you know the rest of the, the visible light spectrum and that will help. You know so you want to make sure your room is very light when you first wake up in the morning if all possible. And then uh, before your way to work you might want to go outside let the, the light hit your skin for a little bit but you know only for a few minutes um, and then go to work. And then during your lunch break at work, if all possible, if it's sunny enough, if the weather's nice enough, try to eat your lunch outside. If it's during the summer or depending on where you live, you'll be able to make some vitamin D. You know, I don't want you to burn. You know, try to do it within your tolerance of how many minutes you can until you burn, but try to eat outside to get some sun. And then on your way home, um, when you get home, if it's not, you know, dark outside, depending on the time of year, uh, you want to maybe go outside for a walk or get a little bit of a little bit of that you know evening IR um, and a little bit of UVA on your skin um, and you know in your eyes and that way throughout the day you get exposed you know it's not perfect but it's better than most people in our modern world we'll have enough serotonin the serotonin will later be methylated into melatonin so that if you sleep in complete darkness and more melatonin is produced you'll get a much better restful sleep your mood will be elevated because you had a higher production of serotonin and norepinephrine from exposure to natural light, so you won't get those seasonal blues. And that's what seasonal affective disorder is, is literally a lack of exposure to sunlight to both the skin and the retina, so less serotonin and norepinephrine are produced, and less beta endorphins are produced. So, you know, you get depressed. You know, a lot of people suffer from seasonal affective disorder. Uh, there has been mutations in the OPN4 gene that helps regulate melanopsin and being co correlated to people suffering from SAD because they have less melanopsin. So yes, that a lot of this has to do with sunlight exposure. We human beings, we are animals, and we were gotten sun since the dawn of time. And for some reason, modern man thinks that they don't have to be exposed to natural light. And because of that, it causes a lot of issues. A lot of issues with your health, as we talked about. Um, so yeah, definitely you want to get sun. Um, go briefly over natural light real quick and its importance. UVB, midday sun, you know, depending on where you live, um, is very important for vitamin D production. UVA is important for production of nitrous oxide, which is a vasodilator. And is important for the production of beta endorphins, which improve mood and also relieve pain. Um, they both, uh, sunlight exposure um, helps to properly regulate the immune system through the, you know, the production of those endorphins as well as production of alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, um, which also helps to regulate, you know, when exposed, it helps regulate melanin production as well as immune function. Um, and it can, sunlight can help, if you get it properly, it can help properly regulate your immune system. Now, like I mentioned, too much can suppress the immune system you know, and cause its own problems. But if you get enough in regulation, it can't help a lot of people suffering from autoimmune conditions. Um, and, you know, also being exposed to light, whether on your skin or through your eyes, um, natural light, it, it does a couple of things. It increases serotonin production, which is important for mood stabilization, general feeling of happiness um, as, as a neurotransmitter. Um, and within the brain also increases norepinephrine which is the um, hormone is neurotransmitter associated with being alert um, and also alertness and it also helps with uh, blood pressure regulation um, and mood stabilization too uh, so yeah I mean natural light is very important and a lot of us are not getting it through our daily basis because of our modern lives um, now I will do a later video on artificial light, which we're all exposed to because we live in a modern society with 
you know, blue lights being admitted from our television screens and computer screens and cell phones and the fluorescent lights above our heads and everything. And I would talk about the pros and cons of each form of light. Um, and, and if there are any pros with certain lights um, and, you know, how you can work better using healthier artificial light sources to improve your health. But that'll be for another video. Today's video is on the importance of natural light and how it can help. Um, one thing, one last thing I uh, forgot to cover and I want to talk about it real quick um, is that when it comes to skin cancer, there have been studies that show that the farther you are away from the equator, the higher risk of skin cancer that you have. In addition, melanomas are worse in areas that are not exposed to the sun. For example, melanomas of the, of the face are not as severe as far as their ability to metastasize compared to a melanoma that you would get at like the very lower part of your back that would not get a lot of sun. There is a correlation between proper sunlight exposure and reduced risk of skin cancer or reduced severity of skin cancer. Now that being said, if you get sunburn a lot, you do a lot of oxidative damage to your skin, you don't get enough omega-3 fatty acids in your diet to help prevent against that photooxidation, help prevent against retinal damage too from exposure of too much blue light, then yes, sun when used improperly can cause skin cancer. But when used properly, on the other hand, it can actually be very beneficial um, in protection against skin cancer, especially melanoma formation and melanoma severity, um, which I know is pretty much against all natural you know rec not natural but all conventional recommendations that you would get from a dermatologist but if you actually look at the studies and there are many of them and jack cruz talks a lot about this you you can reach that conclusion that sunlight exposure is very important to the skin when used properly um as always if you found this video helpful please like share and subscribe to the Fix Your Gut YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, hope, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.